Hey, welcome back to another episode of Just Call Me Josie. Today's video is going to be a quick and easy makeup look for back to school or work. And this is going to be a cruelty-free version as well as a very, very realistic version. I've seen some back to school tutorials that involve falsies as well as baking and contour. Now, I don't know about you, but I would most definitely prefer my beauty sleep and to spend a couple of extra minutes in bed instead of putting on some falsies. So this one is for all of you out there. This look is still, of course, going to make you look really put together Together and like you did put in a lot of effort and no one's gonna know that you didn't and that you chose to sleep a few extra minutes so let's get straight into this realistic cruelty free makeup look for back to school okay guys so what I have on my face currently is of course my eyebrows now I personally feel like you don't mess with eyebrows that early in the morning so I feel like you should just stick to what you are most comfortable with and what takes you the shortest amount of time and for me that is the ColourPop Dip Brow which is what I use today alongside the ColourPop Brow Gel as well. So we are going to move on straight to the face. So I picked the Prime Light from Milani and this one has a tiny bit of subtle sheen in it but it's also pore smoothing as well so I feel like this one could fit a lot of different skin types. Focus most of the product around the nose area. Also putting the remainders around my cheek area, so pretty much all over the face basically as one does with primer. Next step would be foundation and I am going to use my trusty Holy Grail foundation from Wet n Wild. This is the Photo Focus foundation. This one never fails me and it does last really well throughout the day. It never looks dry or cakey and it never feels like really heavy or gunky throughout the day even if you're wearing it for 8 plus hours. So for me, the quickest tool to use in the morning is by far my trusty old sort of beauty blender, I was gonna say, but this is the one from Real Techniques because it's a lot cheaper. And I was so angry at these from Real Techniques in the beginning because I just kept on ruining them. They just kept on sort of ripping apart and falling to pieces really quickly. But then I also had a beauty blender and that one actually did the same thing. I thought that one would last a lot longer, but it didn't. So now I am sticking with these cheaper ones. They do the job just as well, in my opinion. Okay, so there you have a thin layer of the Wet n Wild foundation. And in my opinion, even up close to a mirror, this one really looks like skin it doesn't look like you caked on a bunch of makeup so let's move on to the eyeshadow so for today's quick and easy look we are only going to stick with two different eyeshadows so first up i picked a super shock shadow from colourpop and this is in the shade desert and this is a satin finish now a satin shadow is really really good actually to place in the crease as well as all over the lid because they are a lot more forgiving than a matte shadow would be and you won't have to spend as much time blending in the morning so my suggestion would be to stick with a satin for the crease so I'm just gonna pick up any synthetic blending brush this one is from Real Techniques and dip it straight into the palette like so actually I'm kind of swirling it to make sure I get enough product on here since this is a very different type of formula you do and need to load the brush a little bit more than you would a powder. I'm just going... No, absolutely not. We are, of course, going to prime our eyelids first to make sure the pigmentation sticks throughout the day. I never ever put on eyeshadow without priming, so I know what happened there. I have no idea. Let's prime first. I am using the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, but stick with whatever doesn't make your eyeshadows crease that you already have at home and don't feel like you need to pick up any of the specific products that I'm talking about today and just stick with whatever you already got that is going to work perfectly fine as well okay so now we can go in with desert from Colourpop I'm just gonna place it on the outskirts of my crease and just swirl it around and as you can see that just gives you a really really soft blown out look straight away which is what you'll get with a satin. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go back in one more time, loading up my brush in just big, swirly, circly motions all the way from the outer corner as well towards the inner corner right here. And that is pretty much going to be it. I just want a really light wash of color in my crease. And then once we're done with the crease, I am just going to dip into this again, this time though with my finger. And this is going to make the look look 
really <laughs> dimensional. English is not my first language. And it's gonna look like you have a lot of depth on your eyes even though you haven't and it's all the same shade. Placing it first with the brush and then packing it on with the finger is gonna give you, like I said, a different result. Making it look like you spent a lot more time on it. I am grabbing Ringer from Colourpop. And I'm just gonna take my trusty old finger because it's right here, really convenient on my hand. And I'm just gonna tap that lightly all over the lid. And I'm focusing this mainly on the inner corner, I'm sort of just fading it out towards the edges of the outer corner, leaving a little bit of a desert right at the edge to give the look a little bit of depth. Okay, so we are actually done with the upper lid, so I am just going to curl up my lashes really quickly. And since we're not using any false lashes and just mascara for this look, then this step is quite important, I feel like. Then I am just going to load up my lashes with the Milani Trifecta Mascara. And this one gives really nice and natural, fluffy, fluttery looking lashes. Brush looks like this. Try not to be in such a rush that you will poke yourself in the eye. That has happened to me more than I can count. <laughs> Now it's time to go in with some concealer and I chose the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer for this look. It goes great with the foundation, of course, since they're in the same line. And I'm just going to place it right underneath my eyes. And I'm not really doing a triangle, I'm just focusing most on the inner corner, just dragging it a little bit outwards. And then I'm just going to take the pointy edge of the beauty sponge and just bounce away. Also bring it out just a little bit to clean out the eyeshadow really nice and quick. Now you could of course powder your face if you feel like you need it to. I happen to have a really dry skin type so I don't need it to powder honestly. I'm gonna put a little bit just a tiny hint of mascara on my lower lashes because I remember when I was in school I would have to spend my breaks removing smudges from my lower lash mascara. There was one thing I learned in school, it was to not pile on the low lash mascara. Thank god for school, am I right? I'm going to apply the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer with this ginormous brush from Real Techniques. This one is pretty much the size of my cheeks, which makes it really, really quick and easy to get out the door. So, pro tip, choose a really large brush and it's gonna be a lot quicker. Just sort of sloppily slapping that. That did not sound very nice at all. I'm just carefully placing that on my cheeks. Going along the hairline as well. If you don't have time to contour or you just don't feel like it, a really quick tip is to grab your beauty blender and drag it along your bronzer. That is going to help clean it up really nicely and it's gonna help it look like you have really structured cheekbones even though you didn't put down any contour at all. You can put on some blush if you want to, I don't feel like this look calls for any blush, I'm just gonna skip it and move straight on to highlighter because every look, let's face it, needs some highlighter. So I picked the Colourpop Hero Kitty Kitty, I believe it's called. I'm just picking it up on a Real Techniques brush and making sure to swirl it, not just stripe it. These sort of circular motions make it look a lot more natural in my opinion. I'm also just going to take my ring finger and a little bit of highlighter and put it right on the inner corner. This is probably my favorite thing to do. It just sort of makes you look so much more put together and a lot more awake than you actually are. So yeah, don't forget your inner corner. If you have some extra time, you can also take your finger and pop some on the cupid's bow and some down the nose as well. Once I am done with my face, I will take my beauty blender one last time and just bounce it over the highlighter as well as the bronzer, just to marry those together as well as on my forehead to not have a stark line between bronzer and foundation and so on and so forth. We only have our lip color left and I chose a Colourpop Lippy Sticks. One, they are really affordable and two, they are super comfortable as well as being really long lasting and they are also going to wear away gracefully. This is the shade Brink in the matte formula that is going to be a bit more long wearing. If you do have issues with your makeup staying in place throughout the day then I would suggest a few spritzes of your favorite setting spray. Spray a couple of times. 
And that would just lock everything in place. And this one tasted really bad. Oh my gosh, I have never tasted it before. Okay guys, so this is the finished makeup look for back to school or work or back to anything really. It is super quick, simple and easy and it's going to get you out the door really fast. That was my dog. She always interrupts some way or another. Please give this video a thumbs up before you leave and also feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you on board. I upload three new videos every week and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Take care until then. Bye!